Hi, Bob Wormsley here from Insidium. It's Top Tip Tuesday. And today I'm going to show you this really amazing technique where you can take a low particle count simulation and using Nexus, we can up res it to make it massively detailed. And the real beauty of this technique is that this can work on cached simulations. So you don't even need all of the modifiers that were used in the original scene. So let's start that clock and we'll get cracking. Here's our base scene then, and it's very simple. We've got an emitter, which is set to ring mode, and we've got this NX turbulence with 15 strength, and that's it. And obviously this looks very unimpressive, but what we're going to do is cache this and then use that cached sim to create a really high detailed up version. So let's go to Insidium, X particles, bring in an XP cache. We'll cache to internal memory, and we'll build cache. So this is saving it to the scene file, and there is cached those already. So now this is cached, we can scrub backwards and forwards. We can actually even look, delete the turbulence. We're not using that anymore. This is reading it from cache. So let's take this underwhelming sim and create a really cool high detailed one. So we'll go to Insidium, X particles, Nexus, and we're gonna bring in the brilliant NX upres. Let's bring it into our scene. So if we have a look in the settings, the upres needs a source emitter where it's getting the information from and a destination emitter where it's going to pass on that particle information to. So obviously the source is going to be our cached emitter base, but now we need a destination. And the easiest way is to create a copy because we want it to be set up in virtually the same way. So let's make a copy of our emitter base and we'll delete the cache tag. We don't need that. This is going to be live, this one. And let's just go to the display tab and we'll change the color to green just so it's dead obvious. And we'll change the display from spheres to dots. So it's um, really quick. And then we're going to go to our emission tab and leave everything. It's in pulse at the moment and it's doing it every 60 frames. But instead of it being 60 particles per frame, we want loads more. Let's put this on, say, 2000 particles per frame. So now we're going to go to our NX up res and actually look, let's just rename this emitter base one, the copy we made. So it's obvious one, we'll call this one up res. This is going to be the high resolution one. So let's go to our NX up res. We can now put our emitter up res in the destination window and we'll leave everything on default. Let's hit play, see what happens. And yes, you can see, look, our green particles, there are no modifiers here live at all. They're getting all of their movement and their position and all of their information from this cached low resolution pink particles. Brilliant. So that's just working in its default settings. Let's just make a couple of adjustments. Our, we can make our base particles invisible, the cached ones. We don't need to look at those. And with our up res ones, let's have them die off. They've got a full lifespan at the moment. So we'll go to the emission tab of our up res and we'll just click off full lifespan. Let's put it on maybe, I don't know, 70 frames with 20 frames variation. So now we get this regular pulsing based on that lower res sim. Brilliant. So one thing you can see is we've got a little bit of kind of blobby clumping going on. And that's because our up res is looking at the base particle information and passing that data on to all of the up res particles. And if you have a look at our settings, by default, we have the max count set to three. So any one up res particle is having the velocity information uh, blended from th its nearest three base particles. So if we up this, it's getting more of a blend. It's using more particles to get that velocity data. So there's going to be less of this clumping. So look, if we put the max count up to say 15, now there's going to be less of that. Yep, that's working. And the more and more we go, the kind of the more accurate you're going to get, the less clumping, but obviously it's making loads more calculations, so it will slow down. Um, the max is 64. Let's put it on the max. And this is um, every single one of these green particles is using its closest 64 base particles to get its velocity information. We don't need it to be that. Let's put it on, say, 15. 
However, there are other settings. We're just using the velocity of our base particles to get this up res sim. But look, we can get their radius, their color, the group they're in, the mass, and also the position. So look, if we switch off velocity and switch on position, now it's going to get the exact position of those parent particles. And you can see with this mode, they really start to group together an awful lot. But it's an interesting effect. What we can do just to ensure they don't kind of collapse in on themselves like this is we can activate push, which will push them apart. So look, let's click on that. And on default, this is going to push them apart. And we're going to get these kind of like diffuse blobs going on as they push each other apart, which is quite interesting, but not what we want for this. If we reduce down the push distance, those blobs will be uh, not as big, but we get a really nice kind of water droplet effect, which is pretty cool. But for us, what we're going for is if we switch that off, we are wanting this cool kind of high detail velocity explosion. And this is all coming from a cached base emitter and we can up-res it live using the brilliant Nexus up-res.